your son? That's my boy. This is your baby boy? That's beautiful. I miss him. You don't got his son no more because your ex-wife took him away because you reviewed too many albums. We just listened to the, the son together. Oh my God. That's my boy. That's my son. Uh. Hi everyone, <laughs> Van Tannen here, the internet of the nerd, and it's time for a review. <laughs> <laughs> a review of the new Ibibio <laughs> Sound Machine record. It's self titled. This is the debut full length LP from the London based band, which is fronted by British Nigerian singer Eno Williams, whose band features horns, bass, loads of percussion, guitar, synths. The eight member lineup of her band leaves a lot of these tracks feeling really full and intricate and layered. There are a lot of bright horn breaks on this record, funky bass lines, really lively performances throughout a lot of these tracks. Performances that my body just cannot deny. If the song Let's Dance, let's say we're playing at the club, I would throw down the energy on on this record, on some of the tracks, is pretty stellar. So this is a very visceral LP, but the influences that go into this album as well make it interesting enough to kind of, huh, who, huh, huh, contemplate. There's Afrobeat and high life music flowing throughout the veins of this album, as well as psychedelic rock, disco, funk as well, and most of the tracks here feature these really odd, intrusive synthesizers that leave some of the tracks here feeling kind of experimental, a little noisy, post-punky. Some of the tracks here have these subtly futuristic electronic qualities to them, but if you strip these synthesizers and electronics and synthetic drums away, you would have a record here that sounded kind of like a blast from the past, just like an obscure Afro-pop or Afro-beat gem recorded in the 70s that never really quite got traction. And I'm not trying to say that the synthesizers on this record aren't good. There are a few moments here where maybe they're a little unnecessary or they're not adding that much to the track, but I think what the synthesizers and the electronics do on this record is interesting. You have this very vintage Afrobeat instrumentation throughout this LP, but you've got this anachronistic thing going on with the sound, with the synthetic sounds weaved into these drums and horn breaks and guitars. And that is a sense that the cover of this album tries to give off too. You have this very retro looking color palette, as well as a black and white picture featuring a pop singer like figure dressed in a very colorful and densely patterned outfit from a country and a decade that both seem foreign to me. And on top of all of that, she's clutching what looks like a brand new synth. So this band definitely has style, they definitely have a goal, they definitely have a mission statement in mind, which I think they give away a little too easily over here. But they still use this style to deliver some really fun, funky, memorable tracks. Like the song Let's Dance, I love this track for its fast-paced rhythm, the quirky synth work, and the vocals on top of this thing too. It's one of the few moments where Eno comes off really eccentric and kind of oddballish. The groove is top notch on this thing. If this record came out in the 70s, I could see it being this really strange obscurity that a guy like James Murphy would bring into the studio for inspiration when working on a new project. You've got the song The Talking Fish, which is more of a funk influence track and has one of the stickiest bass lines on the entire LP. And this really psychotic, grimy, colorful, really smile-inducing guitar solo toward the back end of the track. There's Woman of Substance, which is at a point in the record where things are toned down a little bit more, get more soulful, get more spacious. The tracks tend to run a bit more cerebral, softer, more patient. What sounds like analog beats on this track, they sort of repeat and plot along against this intensely growing instrumentation. One of the best vocal performances from Eno Williams is on this track as well. And this is just one of the many examples of moments on this record where I can just get lost in the rhythm. These guys have a really hypnotic quality to the way that they approach grooves. They continue down this more subtle road with tracks like Prodigal Son, which is the most expansive song on the entire record at six minutes. And then there's Got To Move, Got To Get Out, which is just the chilliest closer just before a little outro interlude. There's tons of hand drums layered into this track, these really explorative improvisational synth leads. Not only does the album get more chill as it goes along, but I think it moves into more synthetic territory too, or maybe that's just a, a sensation that uh, is, I'm just feeling on my own. There are tracks earlier in the LP where I am really enthralled with 
the beat or the mood of the song or just the horn breaks, which are pretty classy, like I'm Running or The Tortoise, which actually uh, that track has a really obnoxiously long fade out outro that I don't care for too much. But the issue that I have with these songs is that maybe for what obviously seems like the mission statement of this record, they're a little average, maybe sounding a bit too much like run-of-the-mill Afrobeat. But still, regardless of that, I think the playing and the performances on these songs are good, and I still think that a lot of people could get something out of these tracks. And there are songs on here like Ooh the Peacock as well, which I do like, but do feel a little short of breath, which is maybe the, the biggest Achilles heel for me of this entire record. Other than that, I think that they could get bolder and explore this Afrobeat, Afrofunk, electronic fusion a bit more. This record is kind of short, just about 38 minutes, and considering that they're working in a genre that relies on just expansive linear grooves, I think a lot of these songs could have gone longer. Even though there's clearly a lot of good playing on this record, even though there's a lot of talent, even though these guys clearly have a sound in mind, it's very obvious to me on this debut, in a lot of respects, these guys are still feeling out the idea of this sound, still exploring the possibilities of what this kind of fusion, this kind of sound could mean. I hope from here on out they just push harder and they push further than they did on this record, because if, if there's anything that holds some of these songs back, it's that they didn't experiment enough. As is, I think this record is very good, it's relatively solid, I think it's going to be an enjoyable listen for a lot of people, but I'm mostly excited for the incredible potential that I think these guys do deliver on with a handful of tracks here, just kind of waiting for that to bleed into whatever else they manage to put on the rest of their records into the future. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Tran, Zishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Drink more water. Abibio Bound, sound machine, <laughs> self-titled forever.